While suffering isn't new to humanity, it's probably new to most of us. I'm Matt Saxinger, pastor at Susquehanna Valley Church. We want to help you navigate through any suffering that you experience in life, especially what we're going through right now. You know, as a country that's affluent and comfortable, worry and the stress that comes with it, that's often new to us. And so we want to be able to come into your life with what the scriptures say and come alongside you and encourage you that this isn't the end, that God's still in charge and, and that life is still good, even if life isn't what we want it to be. See, uh, the, part of this uh, reality that is new to us is because we live in a culture that's built on affluence and comfort. And if you think back through just about every, every advertisement, every commercial that you've seen ever since you were a little kid, almost every one of them was stressing one of two things. We can enjoy our influence or increase our comfort. Enjoy our influence, increase our comfort. And those two things have been at the heart of Americans for as long as I've been alive. And we're at a place where now they're threatened. And the possibility of a recession or depression or a virus or, or loved ones passing away is real to us and new to us in, in, in a way that we just can't avoid right now. And so what do we do about that? I think Jesus has a path for us. The scriptures talk again and again about the fact that Jesus knew what was in the human. He knew what was in our heart. And he often offers us truth to be able to come alongside in those key moments of struggling, suffering, and worrying. So we're going to look at one, John chapter 6. I think it's huge for us right now. Um, when we talk about this, when Jesus talks about worry, it either has the, the, the feeling of a threat or a gift. And how you perceive it and how you receive it makes all the difference in what Jesus says. It's either a threat to you as one being in charge of all of life and, and you're the boss of everything, or it's a gift that you actually don't have to be. So John chapter six, or Matthew chapter 6, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, or what you will eat or drink, or about your body and what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not, they do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? In verse 34, he brings it all to a conclusion. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. There's two things about this that I think you take it, take it out of the category of it being a threat and put it into the category of it being a gift. And the first one is this, is that in God's eyes, being human means being dependable. That you're not the one in charge as much as you think you are. That God and his control and his planning and his, the way that he's moving history is over top of you and what you think happens in life. The reality is that most of us feel like we're in charge of today and we feel like we're in charge of tomorrow. And so we take tomorrow's worry and we put them on our shoulders. And Jesus says, don't do that. It's not your job. You're taking burdens and pressures that are, should be on God, the Father's shoulders, and you're placing them on yours. And if you're doing that, then, then anything that could happen in life that could throw you off is going to be a threat because it's outside of what you can control. What Jesus is talking about here is meant to be a gift. And the wise people can understand that what God's trying to do through these seasons of difficulty is, is really it's one of two things. He's either going to carry us through it so that we overcome the struggle, or he's going to carry us home. The reality is the scriptures talk about the fact that every one of us is going to die. But God is comfortable and he's faithful enough to be able to carry us through even the very, very cessation of our own life. And so a worry might shake us, but God's either going to carry us through or carry us home. Even the birds of the air are cared for, Jesus says. Even if they fall to the ground and they die, they don't do so outside of the care of God the Father. See, we're not in charge as much as we think we are. We, we have this phrase that we say with our kids at dinner time, where you know we'll put a plate of food down in front of them, and every meal they're going to eat the things on the plate that they would like to eat, the things that taste good. They're going to get them out of the way first, and then they'll kind of shove to the corner any vegetable, anything green that they didn't want, and, and then they'll throw a, a fit about having to eat that that food that they don't like. And we've got a phrase that we'll say to them at that point where we're going, "Look, we care more about what makes." Your, your body healthy, then we care about what makes your mouth happy. 
your body being healthy is far more important than your mouth being happy. And so when we come to scriptures like this that are a challenge to us to say, hey, you're not actually in charge as much as you think you are, that can be a threat if we hear it and we say, but I want to be in charge. I want to I want to have control over my own life. And, and I'm saying, yeah, you might want to hear that, but is that what's healthiest for you? Whereas what Jesus is saying actually better, and it's a gift that you're not as in charge as much as you think you are. If you're not, then that means the second thing. It means that you can stop being so focused on strategy and focus more on action. Because action outproduces strategy all the time. And what Jesus is teaching here is that we seek first the kingdom of God. We don't seek the solution to our words. We're not on, we're not on the throne of our life trying to solve everything that we could, we could possibly solve to keep anything from making us struggle and suffer in life. And, and so we're not in the position where we've, not to be the, where we've got to be the key strategy component in life. Action outproduces strategy. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God. In other words, seek a life that's about loving God and loving other people. You, you don't need to solve everything in the world. You don't need to be God in your world. You need to be God's servant, God's messenger in your world. And look and say, how can I love people? Who can I influence today? How can I love them? How can I pray for them? How can I check in with them? How can I serve them? What can I do even in a limited area, in a limited situation, where I can still show love of God and love of others. Worry will be a threat to you as long as you are on the throne. But if you understand that God is and that he's in charge and that he's planning history and he understands tomorrow's troubles, then you can focus on today's actions and you can focus on loving the people right around you today, right where you're at.